All right, somebody asked me how to make a portrait. Uh, I think a lot of people know this, but let's try to make a short tutorial. So here's a skeleton model. If I go through its animations, you can see it has stand. Uh, it even has stand victory, but it doesn't have a portrait animation. So it does make you wonder, how would we add that? So if we want to add that, um, what you could pretty much do for any given model is just duplicate stand and make an animation called portrait. Once you have this animation called portrait, you'll see that um, in much the same way that you have stand, there's also a portrait animation. Now, one of the challenges is, um, what if you want to have one of those background planes in that portrait animation? Now, that would be nice to see. Uh, for example, let's say I open something that has a portrait, like this penguin. This penguin's portrait animation has one of these colored backgrounds. You know, that's useful. If you have a blue player or a teal player, then you can see uh, just from looking at the portrait, you can see who owns it. So um, that's nice, but suppose that I was looking at that skeleton and I want to do that same thing. Now I actually um, having the thing where, uh, well, no, it should be fine. So um, it seems to be the case that uh, my skeleton model deselected. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna duplicate portrait again. Now this is because I had quick browse turned on, so sometimes the model will just disappear if you open another one. Uh, if we turn off the quick browse, then every new model I open will just use up more and more RAM. It'll just open more and more views in here. So like if you see, uh, now if I open this penguin, uh, you know, here in the window I have the penguin and the skeleton both, which is kind of fun because now we can go and try to get this background from the penguin. So because the skeleton has a portrait, you can see right now stand and portrait are the same. But what we want to do is put in a background on the skeleton that only shows in the portrait. So for that, I'm going to import from workspace. I'm going to choose this penguin. And then what we can do in this menu is just leave all. By default, if you leave all and everything, then nothing is being imported. So it makes it a matter of we're choosing what to include. I'm going to select this penguin 6 here and then check the box and import. And we can tell that because it uses this team glow, this is the background plane of that penguin. In the animations section, if I only import the penguin's portrait animation, and then I choose this drop-down option, time scale into pre-existing, it does a it does a merge in the animation. What, what that means is that um, in the model I'm creating, I won't create a new animation. I'll just use the use the penguin animation and animate during the skeleton. We're not even going to really care about motion data, but all we're doing really is we're going to say on this penguin geo set then in the imported animation the stuff from the penguin it's going to be always visible and the existing stuff all those other animations that we didn't merge from the skeleton it's going to be not visible now when i click finish on that it gives me some complaint about i guess we didn't uh care about the animation data of the background plane but that's fine i don't care about the animation data of the background plane so now you can see i have the skeleton he has all the skeleton animations but he also has a portrait animation that's pretty great what he doesn't have is a camera. You'd notice if you play this in game, you know, where, where is it going to put the camera? And so to solve that one, first, you want to find an angle that you like. You know, maybe you're looking at this guy and you think, that seems like a pretty good angle right there. If you like it, click create current camera from view and you'll see that'll let you jump back to that camera. But also by creating a camera, that'll be the one that's used in the game. Uh, so then if we go back to, uh, the actual editor here. Something else you could see that might be nice to do uh, would be to actually move that background plane so that when we're from this angle, that it's actually in the background. And so for that, you know, we can just kind of drag it around and try to take a look at, uh, if you look at this, you can see the camera is pointed that way. So maybe here, you could spend some time trying to see it better, but here you go. Now I've got some red behind his head a little bit. I mean, maybe we want to like lower it, you know, maybe you do it a little lower, but uh, yeah, like there. So now he's got this sort of color behind him. Um, and that color is only there in the portrait animation. So that's the first step, is to have a portrait animation with a background. Now the second step is to make him actually talk when he moves around. So to do that, you go back to the animation editor. And somebody might be wondering, how did I do that? How did I get to the animation editor? I, I was using the hotkeys. Uh, this bar up here is, is keyed to ASDF. So you can just you know ASDF through that. But I was clicking the F key, so I was going to this uh, this one right here that says Select Nodes and Animate. So if you go to Select Nodes and Animate, um, you'll see that brings up where we have this button again that I was using, uh, that I used to create the portrait animation. So what we're going to simply do is uh, clone it. You'll see it'll suggest the name, like Portrait Second. We don't want it to be called Portrait Second. We want it to be called Portrait Talk. 
push OK on that, and now you have a Portrait Talk animation. At first, Portrait Talk is identical to Portrait. They're just two stand animations. But by copying it, we can go in and edit Portrait Talk, and we can give specific behaviors. And these behaviors will still be there, um, but only in Portrait Talk. And so you can create a difference. You know, or maybe maybe Portrait Talk has him uh, move his uh, his mouth in a certain way. So I guess an interesting thing to figure out then would be to try to figure out are the lips of our character split? Sometimes there's just one head and the, the lips aren't a separate component. That would be unfortunate if true. But here we can see the bottom of the mouth is on object 5 and the top of the mouth is linked to the head. So this might mean that we could use object 5 already. Now if you've done um, rigging of a model, you know, if you had a model that wasn't already rigged like this, you might have to split it out and make his you know, his, his lips actually a separate component. But it turns out with the skeleton, we, we kind of lucked out. So lips are already a separate component. And what that means is that we can just, you know, if you have all the nodes turned off, now we know object five is the one to care about because I used that uh, tools view select matrices thing earlier on, the, the, the vertices to actually see what I need to work with here. Um, now I know I have this node. So because I have this node, uh, we have this animation that, you know, it's just a stand. He just moves his head a little bit. But we're going to change that. We're going to make his mouth open and close. So for starters, go to the beginning of the animation and click this little key down here. we will create a keyframe so that at the beginning of the animation, it'll always go back to that one place. Now you'll see I made a blue, uh, blue keyframe here. Well, let's say actually I don't like that. What if I undo that and I want it to be rotation? It's going to rotate his mouth open. Uh, then if I create one of these, it'll actually be green instead of blue. So that's a little bit better. You also want to create one at the end of the animation. Um, now that you have that, it's preset that at the start and the end of the animation, it will go back to the right place. So we can start having fun where in this animation, you can see I'm opening his mouth a little bit. And basically what you want to do is uh, just try to make it, you know, pop open a little bit and then pop closed and then maybe pop open a little bit more and then pop closed. And we're just kind of creating this appearance of talking um, by just kind of a, a expression full, you know, opening and closing of his mouth. And uh, then if you go over here, you can see he's uh, he's doing his thing where he moves his mouth in the portrait animation, or the portrait talk animation where he's actually talking, and the portrait animation he's just sitting there. So that's pretty much how you do it. Um, you could pretty much do this with any model. Obviously, I picked the skeleton because it's a little bit easier because he's already rigged to have his lower jaw as an independent part of the model. But um, that rigging is pretty much the only thing maybe I didn't cover here. And I think that's pretty much all you need to know. You can make a portrait talk, and you can make a portrait animation. And it should work. If you want to have variations, you know, you can copy portrait and make portrait one, portrait two, just like you do with stand animations. Uh, and then it'll have random variation on how things act.